Hello, welcome to our Sunday class. This is for under 1400, or as I like to say, way under 1400. Right, Archer? <clears throat> okay, so today we're gonna look at three of my favorite games, but first we're gonna talk about tactics. <clears throat> and normally, tactics happen when pieces are unprotected, and a tactic for you, maybe not for you at home, is when you take pieces and then your opponent's like, wait, why you take my pieces? Okay, so <clears throat> the tactics you've heard of, they haven't heard of anything, are forks, skewers, and pins. And there's other tactics too. Now, w w when I teach chess and when I watch chess in the other room, because we have a tournament room, most of the tactics are people don't see one move ahead, okay? They like make a move and then their pawn just takes their piece and they're like, oh, right? Okay, no, you know what that means? Oh well. Okay, so <clears throat> for example, let's say this is the position and then you play queen a5 and your opponent takes your queen and you're like, aw, they took my queen. <clears throat> that tactic doesn't necessarily have a name like you lost your queen. I would call it, you got your queen captured. <laughs> now, there's two ways to get your queen captured or your rook or your bishop or whatever. One is that your opponent's not doing anything and you move a piece and then they take it. And you're like, aw. The other is they attack your piece, you don't notice, then they take it. Okay, I don't know which is worse, I'm not sure. So in this position, for example, if it was white's turn to move, white can't do anything that would crush black and black's like oh i have an idea why don't you take my queen so that's really bad right yeah that's the kind of tactic i don't really teach because it says you moved your piece and they took it like don't do that yeah, don't. okay the other kind of tactic which is also uh, sort of simple okay would be like in this position <clears throat> white plays the move bishop d4 with the intention of capturing your queen, mm -hmm. and you're like, la 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 la, and then they take your queen. But then so in one instance, your opponent was doing nothing, and you moved your queen, and they took it. In the other instance, your opponent attacked your queen, and you didn't notice. Those tactics are very simple, that's just capturing your pieces. Yeah. Unfortunately, even though I don't really teach that a lot, that's the main mistakes people are making in tournaments, is their pieces are attacked and they don't notice, then their opponent takes them. And they're like, oh. Now obviously, if I show you a tactic and I say, white to play and win, and you look for five minutes and you're like, I don't know. And then I show you the answer and you're like, oh, wow, that was hard. Then probably in a tournament, you're not gonna see that because even when I tell you, you still can't see it. However, if I show you pawn takes queen, and you're like, yeah, of course. And then you play in a tournament, and your opponent plays pawn takes queen, and you're like, ah, I let him do that again. That's bad, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this is the problem most people have, is they do things they know are wrong, and they're like, ah. So for example, your mom says, I want you to go to bed, by one o'clock in the morning. And you're like, all right. Then you go to sleep at one o'clock in the morning. And then your mom says, what time did you go to sleep last night? And you're like, one o'clock in the morning. Like you told me. And she's like, I, I told you 8.30 last night. And you're like, what? So you thought she said one in the morning, but she said 8.30. So you stayed up four and a half hours later than you were supposed to, right? You didn't know that. You thought she said one in the morning. You, just, you didn't hear it right. Maybe when she said 8.30, somebody else said 1 a.m. and you thought that was her, like somebody on TV said it. Okay, now, or your mom could say, I want you to go to bed at 8.30, and you're like, 8.30, perfect. Then you're like, yeah, I'll step till one in the morning. You see the difference? Yes. In one of them, you didn't know you were doing something wrong, and one of them you did. And you're like, yeah, I'll step till one in the morning. She won't know. Okay, in chess, that happens too. I make a move and you're like, Wow, that was hard. I would never see that. Or you're like, oh my, he took my queen and I would have done that if I was the opponent. I would take the queen too. So here's the problem with chess. If you do things you know are wrong, 
How are you gonna get better? You know they're wrong, and you still do them. You're totally gonna. Right? So your goal in chess is to never do things wrong that you know are wrong. You should do things wrong you don't know are wrong. That's not your fault. Then my job is to teach you everything that's wrong. Then if you know everything and you never do it, then you never make a mistake. Okay? All right. And unfortunately, most of my students and most of the games I watch, people do things are wrong that they know are wrong. And then they're like, ah, oh, I can't believe I did that again. And I'm like, what? Why would you do it again? Okay. So you know losing your queen is bad, and so does the world chess champion, except he doesn't lose his queen and you do. So that, you know. Okay. So we're going to look at three of my favorite games where they were taking lots of pieces and checkmating and singing and dancing, right? <laughs> The first one's the most famous game. What's the most famous chess game? Okay, it's called the opera game. No? Nothing? No, no. If you go to the internet and go to like Google and type in the opera game, the, the chess game will come up. Really? Yeah. This is the most famous game ever. It was played at an opera. Because the opera was so exciting, they decided to play chess. Okay, this was played by Paul Morphy. And he was the best player in the world a long time ago. I know. Yeah, and then, yeah, we'll delete this nonsense. <laughs> okay, and this, this position, you guys have had a lot. Yes. Okay. Now, in this position, if grandmasters are playing, black usually plays here, yeah. and sometimes black plays here. But this game was played 150 years ago, so black played here. Now, what's funny is, there's a website some of you have heard of, called chess.com. I've heard of that. Okay, there's also chesskid.com, which they also own, by the way. By the way, you don't know this because you're kids, but companies own other companies. So let's say, for example, there's two places to get a car wash, and you're like, I hate that place, but I like that one. And then you find out when you're older that they, one of them owns the other one. Same company. Happens all the time. Yeah. I like that grocery store, but I hate that one. Well, they're owned by the same company. Huh. And then you're like, what? So, for example, Walmart, which you've heard of, yes. and some of you have heard of Sam's Club. Yes, it's the same company. Yeah. It's I the same place. Yeah, it's the same yeah. place. The same. The, the same company owns them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No talking. All right. So, so I, I, I made a video series which comes out next week on Chess.com on this position. Really? Yeah. Okay. And white plays in the center. Shocking. And black makes a slight mistake. Something you've never heard of. That means they've heard of it. Called a pin. Black plays here. That pins the knight because I said so. Yeah. And when things are pinned or tactics or whatever, usually it's because they're lined up. Yeah. Like that way or that way or that way. They're lined up somehow. This is a diagonal lined up. So if the white knight moves, black takes the queen. Now what's funny about this, when I'm playing kids for fun, like at a chess camp, I take their queen all the time. They move their knight in similar positions, and I take their queen, and they're like, aw. And I'm like, yes. That's a relative pin. That is. That's because I was playing my dad, and it's a relative pin. He's my relative. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay, so now there was a lot of capturing. White captured this. And black. Black captured that. White captured that. And black captured that. That's all fair. Try not to make noise. Try. Okay, now, white played this move with your favorite threat. It's the best thing you can do. Oh. It's so good that if you do it, you win. Yeah. That's pretty good. It's the that bishop, that queen bishop checkmate. Right. So if black ignores that and develops his bishop, then checkmate. Now, a lot of kids, when they see that for the first time, and sometimes more than the first time, they're like, that's not checkmate. Then they sit there for two minutes and go, oh, well. And then I've had kids like a million times in a row say that's not checkmate. Then sit there and go, oh, well. Okay, so here's why people don't get good at chess. And here's why people do get good at chess. Let's say you don't know anything because when you were born, you didn't know anything. And then you, you learn stuff. Some people learn and some people don't learn. So for example, let's say you've never seen a toilet in your life. And I'm like, there's a, there's a toilet. And you're like, what do I do? And I'm like, well, when you're done, you push this handle down. Then you're like, okay. Then you push the handle down. And then you're done. You learned it. Right? 
when you go to the bathroom, you look at the toilet, are you like, hmm, there's a thousand things I can do. No, you push the handle down. You don't like kick the toilet, okay. Now, if a kid comes in and says, what do I do? And I say, push the handle down, and he's like, what? Okay, and then I'm like, see? And he's like, huh? All right. Okay, this happens in chess. I'm like, that's me. And then you're like, obviously. And the other kid's like, what? Then when I made him, he's like, what do you mean it's me? I'm like, I just showed you this. Then five minutes later, I made him again. And he's like, what? I'm like, I just showed you this. So some people don't learn very quickly. I show them the same thing over and over again. And they're like, what do you mean that's me? And I'm like, it was made two minutes ago. It was made six minutes ago. Okay. And I've seen kids that don't believe it's made after they've seen it like 20 times. Really? Yeah. And I, I show them how to play golf because chess isn't their game. Okay. Now, let's go back. Black didn't want to get checkmated. When somebody moves their queen out and their bishop out and they're pointing there, they always want to mate you. And sometimes they can, sometimes they can't. Here you can. So black played knight f6 because black doesn't want to get mated. Okay. Now, this is a double attack. This pawn's not protected. We talked earlier, sometimes you can take things and they're protected, and sometimes they're not. Try not to make noises. Okay. And so here, when you start the game of chess in this position, that's the starting position. You've all had it a lot. Yeah. All the pawns are protected because I said so. They all are, every game. All the pawns on both sides are protected. So if black takes the A pawn, white takes with the rook. If black takes the B pawn, white takes with the bishop. And I can go on and on. And these pawns in the middle, now don't cry, because this will make you cry, it's so shocking. Those are protected four times. Now the other ones are protected once. Okay, one, 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 one. That means if your opponent takes it, you have one way to take. You can take with the king, with the bishop, or with the rook. That's one. These are protected four times. So when people take there, you're like, oh boy, I have four ways to take. So they don't take there because they don't want to lose their pieces. So in this position, after knight f6, the correct move, this pawn is not protected anymore because the bishop moved away. And this pawn's attacked and protected. So white does something called a double attack. How does white attack this pawn and attack this pawn with something else? It's already attacked once. Let's attack it with something else. Queen. Yeah. Now if we go queen here, obviously we're not attacking that. And the queen's attacked. So let's move the queen somewhere else. Let's make a battery and line it up with the bishop. Yeah. Where? Right behind it. Yeah. What's the name of that square? Um, C B three. Yeah, close enough. B three. B three. Right. Yeah. Now white's threatening that because I said so, and white's threatening that, and black's like, wait, I can't protect them both. And then white said, no talking. Okay. Now I actually had this position once because I've played about three hundred thousand chess games in my life, so I've had a lot of positions. And my opponent didn't see that. What? So he played here, because he saw the what? other one. He saw the B pawn. And then I checkmated him. He didn't see that? See how it's checkmate? Yeah. And he's like, oh, I got checkmated. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I won. It's okay. I see that totally. Okay. So in the game I'm showing you, black played here, defending his pawn. Now, if white takes this pawn, seemingly winning this rook, because the rook is trapped, Black has a very tricky move that's slightly too hard for this class. Queen b4 check. I Notice it's check because I said so. Yeah, totally. I and we're attacking the queen. So white has to take the queen, black takes the queen. And as a result, black didn't lose his rook. That was good. Okay. So white didn't do that, although white probably should have done that. And there's another move white could play that's for the next class, not this one. Instead, white played knight here and black protected his pawn with c6. So now if white takes the pawn, black takes the queen. That's the kind of mistake, if you made it, you would be really mad. Yeah. You would be like, oh boy, a free pawn, I'm the best. Aw. Okay. <laughs> That's the kind of thing you have to avoid. You can't give your queen away. And white played here. Now, general principles that you would learn in a class like this is get your bishops and knights out, 
play in the center, and castle. You learned that in this class. Yeah. Who got their pieces out more, white or black? White. Yeah, white got a lot of pieces out. Yeah, that's a lot. And okay. black's like, yeah, that's enough. Okay, now white can castle either way, and black can't castle. And so what black should do is get his pieces out and castle. But he's like, nah, I'll do something dumb. He played here. Does what? that play in the middle and get your pieces out and no. castle? No. And white's like, no, my bishop, stop bothering my bishop. So most people, if they had white, they would save their bishop. But this is a famous game, so it's really exciting. Yeah. And white sacrificed his knight and said, I'm going to checkmate you. And black said, oh boy, a free knight. And white said, oh boy, a free king. Okay. Well, if we block with the queen, we lose our queen. If we block with the knight, the other bishop takes our queen. Because as Shruti would point out, that's a relative pin. Okay, so black played here. And now these are all pinned. There's a relative pin. There's an absolute pin. I'm scared. And white castled queenside. Some of you don't know how to castle a queenside. I do. Yeah, that's how you castle a queenside. Your king goes two squares whenever you castle. A lot of kids, they move their king uh, real far. The computer won't let me. If I go here, the computer's like, what are you doing? But if I go here, the computer's like, all right. Now, this is attacked, because I said so. Yeah. And you're like, well, I don't care. It's defended. Well, let's make a silly move. And I take it. Uh, now you should take white. Yeah, definitely. Because <laughs> if you take with a queen, then I'm going to take your queen. And if you take with a knight, I'm still going to take your queen. <laughs> and if you don't, if, and if you take with a king, the computer's like, don't you know how to play chess? And it won't let me. Yeah, because. Because there's a rook here. So yeah, so anyway, black is like, man, that's annoying. Okay, so black plays rook to d8. Because that, that saves the knight. And now this is one of the most famous moves. This game has two really famous moves. This is the first one. Okay. Okay. So white's like, wow, my pieces are good. I must be Paul Morphy. I must be really good. No. However, you're not doing anything. What are you doing over here? Yeah. What's, what's going on over there? Yeah. So Morphy played this move. What? That way his other rook could get into the game here. What? Which way did black take on d7? What did black take with? King. The queen, queen. The black. Hey, you guys said every piece. That was good. You guys said all four pieces. The king is illegal. It won't let me. Because there's a bishop here. If you play with a queen, I'll take your queen. If you take with a knight, I'll still take your queen with my other bishop. So the rook, like you said. Okay. And then here. Now, we had a uh, uh, employee, friend, acquaintance. And he said, I have a question. And his rating is 1,600. That's higher than you. And he said, can I go here? Now both kings are in check. They are. White's in check and black's in check. <laughs> Illegal. Yeah, you can't do that. You can't make a move and after your move, you're in check. You can't do that. Yeah, you can't Even if your opponent's in check, you still can't do it. So if I try to do it, the computer is like, no, we can't do that. <clears throat> now my friend had another question. This was a weirder question, confusing the audience. Okay. Okay, let's pretend Black plays this silly move so I can, so I can show you his question. Okay. Watch this. Notice that the rook can't move. You agree? Yes. So my friend says, if the rook can't move, it can't, can I go here? My king's not in check because the rook can't move. Do you see, you see what he's saying? Yeah. You see what his point is? Yeah. So can I do that? No. No. But he didn't know why. He's like, if the rook can't move, then I'm, I, you can't take my king. And I was like, ah, oh. and he's 1600, so you gotta watch it. Okay, now, Black, being a very pragmatic player, didn't want to get checkmated. Now, let me make you an analogy, because you know what the word analogy means. Yes. They don't know what it means. Okay, yes, I do. that's where I give you a situation that's similar. Like, so instead of talking about chess, I'm gonna talk about getting beaten up. Okay, in chess, 
If seven pieces are attacking you, that's bad. In real life, if seven people are beating you up, that's bad. Okay, so let's say, hmm, seven people beating me up. How about one person beating me up? Maybe then I'll win, right? So if seven of you were beating me up, I would be in trouble. But if it was one of you, then I'd be like, all right, let's go. Let's see who wins. So Black had the same idea. Black is like, all of your pieces are beating me up. I don't like that. I got an idea. Let's get rid of some of them. Then you won't beat me up. Which piece beats you up the most in chess? Queen. Queen. So Black said, I'll go here. And then White will take my queen and I'll take his queen. I won't get beat up so much because there's no queens. Okay. Reasonable. So if somebody's checkmating you and you're like, ah, I hate getting checkmated. If you trade all the pieces off, they're not going to checkmate you. There's no pieces. So that was a good idea. Okay. So black, white, I'm sorry, white played check. You see how it's check? Uh-huh. Which way did black take? Queen. Queen. Okay, if you take with the queen, once again, I'll take your queen, right? You can't take with the king because it won't let me. Yeah. And then if you take with the knight. Take with the knight is what he did. Okay. Now, this is the most famous move of the game. What? Some people, when I show them this game, they're like, I've never seen this game. This game doesn't look familiar at all to me. And I'm like, why is your voice so funny? And then when I show them this, they go, oh, I know this game. <laughs> this, is, this is the move they recognize. They don't recognize it before. This is a famous move. It's famous because you do something you don't normally do. Let's say you kicked yourself in the head and everybody pointed and laughed at you. Okay, then one day you kicked yourself in the head and you fell down and you landed in a pile of millions of dollars. And you're like, oh man, that was good. Kick myself in the head, millions of dollars. Okay, let's say your friend jumped off the roof and they died. And you're like, man, my friends are dumb. And then you're like, I don't want to live anymore because my stupid friends keep dying. So I'm going to jump off the roof. Then you do, and you end in a pile of millions of dollars. Oh. When you do stuff that's dumb, and then it works out really well, then it gets on the news. They're like, that idiot did that, and now he's rich. And you're like, what? That guy, that guy shouldn't even be alive. That's what White did here. White did something that's really dumb, except it wasn't dumb. It was really smart. White gave his queen away. Usually that's dumb, right? Yes. White played check, and black only has one possible. Black has one possible move. Yeah. What is it? Take with the knight. That's it. That's all he can do. Knight. Why did white give his queen away? What was white's next move? Checkmate. How did you do that? Rook. Rook to d8 checkmate. Yeah. Game's over. Yeah. So white sacrificed his queen and then checkmated black. Now you all know. Get your bishops and knights out and castle. You've heard that. Get your miners. Okay, is that what is that what Black did? No. Mm -mm. That's why you lost. You know, Black's got all this going on over here. That's not good. And then White did everything. White got everything out and castled. That's a famous game. And one of the reasons it's famous, not only is the guy with White a famous player, <clears throat> I didn't tell you this, I'll tell you now. He was playing two people. Really? And they were consulting. What do we do? What do we do? And then they would say, let's do this. And then they got crushed because the other guy was better. Okay. That's a famous game. It's called the opera game. If I go to the internet and type in the opera game, that, you'll see that game. Really? Yeah. All right. Another famous game also played by that guy, the guy who won, Paul Morphy. Now he's black. So we'll flip the board. Bam. Okay, they started, this, they started the same way. And now black played the more popular move. And probably you guys have had this position too. Yeah, I've had it a bunch. Okay, now here's a move that's not played very often, but this game's 150 years old, so it was played very often then. B4, it's a sacrifice. What? And black is like, thank you. Okay, and then because of that, white says, wow, I have a nice center. Look at me. And black's like, no, you don't. Now, if White says, yes, I do, the computer says, no, you don't. <laughs> you see why? Yeah. Yeah, because it's pinned. <laughs> you can't do that. So White's like, all right, I'll castle. Okay. And Black gets his knight out. And White, for some reason, which I'll never understand, plays this move. 
What? That's not a good move. No, never. Okay, and black plays here, and white does something you've never heard of. That means they've heard of it. Called en passant. I've heard of that. I've heard of that. Okay, and white does it. Wow. How does white do en passant here? You're like, I don't know, what's on beside? Okay, so White's pawn is on the one, two, three, four, fifth row. That's the key row. This pawn hasn't moved yet. And those are the preconditions for on beside. A pawn's on the fifth row, and the other person's pawn hasn't moved yet. We got that going on. And he moves two squares, that's two squares, next to each other. Now we can pretend he moved one square and take them. That's what happened. And watch this. Magic. That's on passant. Yeah. If you go to the internet and type in on passant and go to like Wikipedia, they'll show you lots of examples of that. Okay. It's pretty rare. When I play tournament chess, I would say if I play a hundred games, there's one on passant capture. Doesn't happen too often. Okay. And black takes. And now, remember I told you get your pieces out in castle? Yes, yes. And Black's getting his pieces out. Yeah. Right? yeah Pretty good. White, white's, eh, it's, that's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. okay. So if I was white, I would get my pieces out. Yeah. Instead, white says attack. No. Okay. Get your piece out. See the attack? Yeah. And Black's like, our castle. And white says attack. And what Black says, okay, I'll get my pieces out. So now black has all the pieces out in castle, and white did that. So black's definitely going to win. So yeah. Win. Okay, so they traded bishops. That's fair. Oh, yeah. And now, here's a tactic I want to teach you today, but you've never heard of it. It's called a skewer. I've if you want to know what it is, I go to a Greek it. restaurant. I know what it is. And they're like, what do you want? And you're like, I want meat on a skewer. I know and, you're, and they're like, you want meat on a skewer? Aren't you a vegan? And they'll be like, no, that's bad, not me. And you're like, oh, never mind. Okay. I'm so vegan that my wallet's vegan. See? Right, Trudy? What does that say? Vegan. Yeah, it says vegan leather. That way, if I'm hungry during my chess class. Okay. <laughs> a skewer is the opposite of a pin. Yeah, the most important piece of the front. That's right. So watch this. Watch this move. Bam. Shh. The bishop attacks the queen, because I said so, and there's a piece behind it that's less valuable than the queen. If these two pieces were switched, whew, the queen was on f8 and the rook was on d6, that's a pin. When the big piece is in front, that's a skewer. Some of you would be like, what's the problem? I'll just take the bishop. Well, then you lose your queen. Yeah. So that's, that's the problem. Okay, so white attacked the knight, or black attacked the knight, white took the rook, black took the knight, white saved his bishop, black said yum, 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 and white attacked the queen, hoping black wouldn't see the queen was attacked, but black saw it. Once again, black has all the pieces out, and white not, not, not good. Sandwich. Okay, and so he played here, and black said, all my pieces are out except this one. Just like in the last game, so he went here, attacking the queen. Queen moved away, attacked the queen again, queen moved away. Okay, now black decided, I want to do two things, which actually you should decide every move. Here you can actually do it, sometimes you can't do it. The two things you want to do the most in chess, checkmate your opponent, Take their queen for free. Mm -hmm. Those are the two best things you can do. Yeah. And black can threaten both of them here. So he did. Mm -hmm. And this is a very famous move because it's very hard to find. If you want to checkmate white, and you do, yeah. you have to check him and make sure the king can't go anywhere. If somehow by magic white was in check, mm -hmm. where would the king go? Nowhere. Try again by looking at the board. I don't know what we're to, about. The board. to H1. What right. Are about? Yeah. Pay attention. So if this was in check, I would go here. There's nowhere else to go. So watch what Black did. Black played 9G3, a weird move. Yeah, weird. Notice no. I can't go here anymore, right? Yeah. 
It's probably a stalemate. Okay, it's probably a stalemate, except it's nothing like stalemate, but close. Okay, stalemate's when you have no possible move. White has about 20 possible moves. Now, in this position, black has two obvious threats that even you can understand. Black's threatening, knight takes queen, right? Right, Trudy? Yes. And queen takes queen. Yes. How does white save his queen? Take the knight. That doesn't save his queen. Then I play queen takes queen. Take the black knight. Take the black knight. Take the black knight. Oh, you mean with the queen? Yeah. Oh, then I would take your queen that way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. The only way to save your queen is to move your queen. So the move that makes the most sense, to me, is to take Black's queen. Yeah. Right. Now, normally, when you can take a queen, you take a queen. But there's something better. What's better than taking a queen? Checkmate. Checkmate. And Black has checkmate here. I see it. Me too. I see it. I see it. They all say they see it, but none of them see it. I see it. I see they, they don't see it. I see it. I see it. If they see it, they would say it, but they're just like, I, I see it. E2. With what? The bishop? E2. Well, this knight? Yes. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. Knight F3. No, 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 no. Knight F3? No. And pawn takes knight. Oh, wait. Yeah. yeah. Move it up there. It's not this knight to E2, no. it's the other knight. Yeah. And that's no. checkmate. No, you got it wrong. Shh. <laughs> Looking the wrong way. That's checkmate. Who wins? Paul Morphy. White or black? Black. Black. Okay. Now, white didn't want to get checkmated, and white didn't want to lose his queen, so white gave up because those are the only options. Design. Yeah. Either you lose your queen or the guy checkmates you. That's it. Okay. And when the game ended on move 19, these pieces still hadn't moved yet. Terrible. Okay. Now, one of the most famous games ever played, maybe more famous than the opera game, maybe, is a game played in 1895. That was a while ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, although actually, of the three games we're looking at today, that's the most recent. Good. The other ones were before that. Okay, and they played e4, e5, knight f3, knight c, they, they played the same way. Remember when white played here, and you were like, ew, yeah. Ugh. Right, okay, White didn't do that. White played c3, and he wants to play d4. Ha! Ah, and he did. Bam! Right. And then I take you, you, you take, take me, etc., etc., history. <laughs> they played check, because I said so. And he got out of check. Now, if two grandmasters were playing today, Black would play here. The reason is, you can't take the knight because the computer won't let me. I can try, whoops, but it won't let me. Yeah, I see. Because it's what kind of pin? Absolutely. Right, okay. But black played d5 because this game was played a long time ago. And they traded and white castled and black got his bishop out. Now this is a famous game because look how they get all their pieces out. That's how you're supposed to play chess. Both sides have all their bishops and knights out. Now, unfortunately for black, white castled and black didn't castle. And black's like, no problem, I'll castle next move. Well, he can't castle here because his queen's attacked. And the rest of the game, white kept making threats so black couldn't castle. White kept taking things. And if black castles, he'd lose all his pieces. So he's like, I'll castle next move. I'll castle next move. I'll castle and next move. And then he said, I'll castle next game. <laughs> okay, so he played bishop e7. And now everybody took everybody. Watch. Oh, yeah. And now, finally, black can castle, except it's not black's move. And white played here. So and he said, if you castle, I'm going to take your knight. Okay, and he said, if you don't castle, and you make some silly move, I'm going to go here attacking your queen, then I'm going to go here, and then I'm going to go here, and you're going to be like, stop doing that. That's annoying. Okay, <laughs> so Black said, you're not going to play rook e5, and he went here. He's like, you're, you're not going to go there. 
And White said, oh boy, let's threaten checkmate. Yeah. And Black said, no, no, don't do that. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> okay. And then again, like in the Morphe games, White said, why is my Rook over here? So he played here. Okay. And now Black made the losing move. Black should actually go here, but he played C6. Okay. And now White made a famous move. And this is something that I would normally teach the next class, but it's too hard for you. It's called a clearance sacrifice. So for example, you want to stand right there. You're like, if I could stand right there, all of my troubles are over. Oh, I know that but there's a light there. And you're like, oh. <laughs> so you throw the light in the garbage, and then you stand there. And you're like, yes, I stood there. So you sacrifice the lamp, but you stood there. That's what White did. White said, I want to go there. Oh, my pawn is there. You can't take your own pawn. So he gave away his pawn. Then he could go where the pawn was. He said, man, my knight can't go anywhere because the guy takes it. <laughs> I want to go in there. Oh, I'll go here. Oh, wait, I can't take my own pawn. So he played here. Sacrificing his pawn. Oh, now I can. Now. Now, if you take it with a knight, the computer's like, what are you doing? Because it's pinned. You take it with a queen, then I'm like, what are you doing? Checkmate. So which way did he take? With the pawn. And white went, ah. Now, let's pretend white could move again. Let's go here. Now we play this move. And black cries. Why? Can't you can't move the knight. And if you take the knight, you get checkmated. And if you don't take the knight, I'm going to take your knight. So black's like, I know, I'm pinned, I won't be pinned. This is actually probably the thing that would help you most from today's lecture. When somebody pins you, then tell them to stop. Nope. So if they pin you, unpin. You don't want to be pinned. The knight on e7 can't move. What kind of pin is it, Shruti? Um, relative? Try again. Absolutely. Yeah, the knight can't move, right? It's illegal. Mm -hmm. And Black's like, I don't want to be pinned. So he went here, and now he's not pinned. Mm. Now he can move his knight. He should If he castles, I agree, you'd like to castle. Then your knight's not defended enough. Aw. He lose a knight. So by playing king f7, he's not pinned, and he saves his knight. And white went here and said, I want to go there. And black said, no, no, you're not going there. No. <laughs> and white said, I know, I'll checkmate you. <laughs> Don't make noises. And then he wants to play checkmate. For example, rook takes rook, check, checkmate. For example. And black didn't want to get checkmated, so black played here. Mm. Now, white did a discovered attack, something you've never heard of, because you didn't discover it yet. I've heard of it. He played knight g5 check. Obviously, that's just a normal attack. However, I'm threatening your queen. Yeah. I wasn't threatening your queen, but now I am. Right? Mm -hmm. Your king's attacked and your queen's attacked. Normally, that would win the game right away. Normally. But here, black can save his king and his queen. Pretty good. So we have to move our king and protect our queen. How do we do that? King, king behind it. King behind it. That's good, good algebraic notation. King e8. Now if you take the queen, I take your queen. Okay. Now, this is the most famous sequence of moves in chess ever. Really? Yeah. White played rook takes knight check. Okay? Thank you. And black made a move that's very, very, very strange. Confusing the class. Normally, you'd be like, hmm, should I take with a queen or should I take with a king? And if I turn the computer on, it says, no, that loses. So, for example, if I take with a queen, watch how black has no pieces. You watching? Yeah. Check. 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 
and, 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 and black has no pieces. I can take that. I can move my knight here. Okay. Well, obviously white's winning. Okay, white, black didn't want to have no pieces. And if you take with the king, you, you're also losing to a long sequence of moves, which start with rook check. And with my three pieces attacking your king, your king's not doing well. I turn the engine on, it says white's incredibly winning. Okay, plus six, plus 13. That's like being 13 pawns up. Okay, doesn't like black's position. Okay, however, black played a move that will surprise you, king f8. And you're like, whoa, why is black giving his queen away? The reason is there's something more valuable than the queen, and that's checkmate. So if I randomly take the queen, uh-oh. Uh-oh. No. Uh-oh. SpaghettiOs. Okay. And so white played check. And black said, I don't care. Once again, if white takes the queen, checkmate. Right? Okay. Now white made a really famous move because it looks crazy. It's a very famous move. Rook G7. Now, if I take with the queen, I lose all my pieces. Yeah. Check. 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 Queen e6 is better, but that's okay. Right, Archer? Sure. And then, and, and black's like, where'd my pieces go? Okay. And if you take with the king, pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention. If you take with the king, then you lose all your pieces with check. Okay. So, black played this move. Let's go back. If black plays king f8, I play check, because I said so. And now if I take the rook, I take that with check. Who's winning? White. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, so black played here, and white checked again. Now let's go back and look at the sequence of moves, because it's funny. Okay. Watch this. Watch what white does. Rook e7. Rook F7. Man, I can't do it. Rook G7. Rook H7. So white played Rook E7, Rook F7, Rook G7, Rook H7. And black's like, I don't want your Rook. I want to play this checkmate. Rook G7. And now black gave up. Because he saw a million moves ahead and so he's getting mated. He plays King H8. And we check. And we check. And we check. And we check. We keep checking. Until black relies. Until black relies. Checkmate. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. So that was maybe more famous than the opera game, depends who you ask. And you might think, wow, that guy with white was good. He kept sacrificing his rook and checkmating the guy and so forth. And the reason he was good is he was good. He was the world champion for over 25 years. That's pretty good. And he's the only chess player that I went to his grave and I visited. Some people are dead like those guys. Those guys were alive 130 years ago. Really? So they're not alive. Yeah. And then when they died, they put him in a cemetery, some of them. And this guy was the world champion. So it says, wow, look at the world champion. Looks like dirt to me, but yeah. And he's buried in New York City. And I was in New York City. And we went to the cemetery and it said world chess champion Wilhelm Steinitz. He was the first one. And then I'm like, yeah, there he is. Right? Yeah, don't, don't make noise. All right. So... Other famous people are buried. They're not the world champions, so I don't care. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, <clears throat> some people you've heard of. Most people you haven't. If there's 7 billion people in the world, you've heard of like 10 of them. You're like, you know, some famous singer, Taylor Swift, I don't know. <laughs> right? Okay. And so when those people die, you're like, what'd they do? 
And then somebody like Taylor Swift or, or Lady Gaga, nothing. Okay? And you're like, yeah, they sang terrible. Okay. <laughs> so in two, three, four hundred years, in the year like 2,500, 2,400, right? In those years, are they going to say, wow, Taylor Swift? <laughs> no. Okay. However, in 400 years, they're going to say, ooh, Wilhelm Steinitz, Rick Check, Rick Check. Yeah. So if you're a great chess player and you play a great chess game, it'll be on the internet forever. What? Forever. Yeah. So Morphe will be on the internet forever. In a thousand years, they're going to say, Paul Morphe, what a great chess player. They're not going to say, Madonna, she was a singer. And you're going to be like, who? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Already saying who. And it's been like 30 years. Yeah. Madonna was one of the most famous people in the world 30 years ago, and she's worth about $500 million. She's a singer and an actress, but terrible. Mm -hmm. So in 500 years, they're like, who is that terrible singer? I don't know. <laughs> but they're going to say, who is that great chess player? It might be you. If you do things that are great, then when you die, which you will do, in 500 years, 1,000 years, you'll still be famous. They'll be like, wow, Shruti, look at that chess move she played. I can't believe it. They're not going to say, Shruti, she was singing and made $100 million. They won't know who you are. They'll be like, ah, there's a lot of people like that. It's terrible, right? But there are not a lot of chess players who were world champion for 25 years. Yeah. Not a lot of those people. Yeah. And then play games like that. Sacrificing every move, checkmate, every move brilliant. Computer says every move perfect. That didn't happen very often, especially 130 years ago. They played terrible, right? So when you play chess, when you're like, oh, they checkmated me, I missed it. That's not a famous game. Yeah. But when you see 25 moves ahead and checkmate your opponent, they're like, how are you a genius? How'd you do that? <laughs> okay, then you're on the internet forever. Like, wow, she was great. So do that. Do something great, right? Some people are famous because they're so dumb. They're like, wow, that transcends the earth. They're so dumb. Nobody's been that dumb. So dumb. Well, you know, Donald Trump. And don't do that. Yeah. Like those two. Like, who all punch in the chess class? It'll be a hundred years ago. Those two kids are punching in the chess class. <laughs> terrible. And then, what would Nakamura say? <coughs> Frankly, <coughs> terrible or ridiculous. Yeah. And so, if I go to the internet now and I just type in Hastings 1895, that was this tournament. There's a picture of the standings, the results, and of the players. What school do those players go to? Old school. Old school. Yeah, they all have suits and ties on, black and white photo. They all have big beards. Yeah, they didn't know what a razor was back then. They're like, what's a razor? They said, go, go, go to Walgreens to get a razor. And they're like, what's Walgreens? Right? So they're like, oh, let's just grow a beard. I don't know what a razor is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, they didn't have any of that. They're just like, ah, beard, great. All right, good job. All right, it's almost 12 o'clock. Now you can go play chess for fun. Get out of here. Good job. Class dismissed.